In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy he club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to LA and in his first year in LA, he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person. What what do you think a plant is? Basically, in essence, he was trying to say that Kevin Hart is a industry plant and was plopped there. And he, he also mentioned that, oh, Kevin Hart had to sign a contract where you gotta wear a dress. If you wanna blow up, you have to be wearing a dress in one movie or skit or something. He did, he wore a dress in an SNL skit. And then I remember there was an interview where somebody said, would you ever sell your soul and like wear your dress for something? And Kevin Hart interviews like, no, I would never. But you, you can see him nervously acting because then somebody matched cuts when he did have to wear a dress. But he did admit interviews that he would never do that. But he, there's a whole SNL skit sketch where he did wear a purple dress. Okay, and this was 10 years ago. Yep. I mean, he's been big for a long time, like what, 15 odd years from mm -hmm. my recollection. Well, he was big when we were in like middle school. He already had specials out. Now you get the point. Well, did it work if he wore the dress 10 years ago and now Kevin Hart's one of the biggest comedy stars in Hollywood? Man. Is there a real contract in the back end? And it's like, we always say, what would you do for the right amount of money? The cat in his interview said he would specifically never do that. He says the guys that have to do that sold their soul. So we've never seen Cat Williams in a dress, but he's not, he's probably just as rich, but you would say popularity wise, Kevin Hart's more popular. Mm -hmm. Cat was calling a bunch of people out saying how they're liars and their careers and what they say it is. I've never heard Cat Williams tell a lie as a thing. And I rewatched all of his comedy specials after that and I was dying laughing. Like, like he gotta know funny. something, like he's smart. He speaks with so much conviction where it's almost like there's no way he's lying. But isn't it known that he's like a genius? Like his IQ score is like the highest. Yeah, no, that's like a, that. That's the thing. And he said he would in the interview from like three to eight that he read over like 2,000. And he has books. receipts, like. And when I watched him in like Wild and Out, the way he answers when somebody jokes in him, he takes a second, listens, and claps back so fast. But I can tell he like really processes everything. It doesn't seem like he's somebody that jumps off emotion. And anytime somebody was like, so you're not cool with that person? He wasn't trying to cause anything out of it. He was trying to just say, this is the truth. Then I'm just here to tell you all the lies they're telling you aren't true. Mm. So yeah, if he's a master liar, then I fully believed everything that he said. And I didn't see anybody else when they responded, try to bring up a receipt about him. They were just like, we're just going to let the small man have his time. Time, we'll let him air it out. I didn't see anybody try to correct him. So I don't know. It was interesting that nobody really tried to bring back receipts to say that he was wrong. They just tried to say, he's just saying whatever. Why are you waiting so long to come after us? That movie's been done. My career's been done. So I just found that interesting. I think Cat Williams is funnier than Kevin Hart. I would say By so. a long shot. In my opinion, yes. I would agree with that. When I watched this and I saw it was like, oh, Kevin Hart responds and Steve Harvey responds. Yeah, and like you, respond. like you said, they were coming back with just little tiny quips. They weren't yeah. even entertaining it. And then I, I was sitting back like, okay, I don't know the facts. I wasn't there. I don't know nothing. I'm not in Hollywood. I don't know these people. So I was like, well, let me see. He said something about Joe Rogan and said, uh -huh. like, Joe Rogan would never want me on there. He wants to push out people who are way not even funny. And then Joe Rogan said, I love Cat. I'd love to have him on. Let's set it up. In that moment when I saw that, I was like, I wanted to believe everything that Cat Williams was saying until I saw that. And I said, well, he got that wrong because he said with so much conviction, I'm not allowed on Joe Rogan because X, Y, and Z. Now then also I would add, I would go off that. Why hasn't Joe Rogan invited him before? Like, why did he wait till he said that to say, you can come on. It could be happenstance. Yeah, was it happenstance or did he never give him an invite prior to him making a public statement about him. That would probably be the mm. best thing to say if somebody said, well, I wouldn't let Ryan come to my party because he oh, does true. this, this, this. And if Ryan was like, yeah, no, it never, never invites me to his parties and stuff. So, you know, that says a lot about him. And then I see that, Ryan, you can come to any party you want. I don't know that, but- <laughs> That's true. But I don't know. And we will never know. I don't think we will. Yeah, because it could be like you just said, maybe he wouldn't want Cat Williams on there. And that's why he's never been invited. He's a big comedian. Like he's a big- But he never figure. said you couldn't come on. He just said, well, I'm not even gonna reach out to him. Maybe Joe Rogan just never thought about it and he never got set up and there's probably hundreds of other people that never got interviews set up that could and yeah. should be on there i guess it would be crazy to like have all your lives ready to go and just 
three hours, spew it out and like know that this was gonna happen or... But I don't get why he, he would have to lie. That's what I'm saying. But he also said when you were a comedian back in the day, you would have to go on a radio talk show to sell your tickets because there was no social media. So he says, I never did those because people knew I was funny and showed up and I never promoted myself. And then he said, he's not here to say all this to then promote his new special after this. Mm -hmm. He was saying, I have the most specials out of any comedian. I have 12, 16, whatever the number is. So I'm like, it's not like he said all that and then at the very end, oh, it's just because he just dropped his Netflix special. So all the traffic was to go towards that. He had all this to say at the beginning of 2024. What, maybe just put a nail in the coffin to what he felt was lied about him. It just would have felt like if there was a motive behind it. Everybody's talking about him, but what was he trying to gain from that? Because he has nothing to promote. He had nothing to sell. Uh, I just thought it was funny how he brought a lot of these people out to, and like made videos about it and like responded to it. Like, you guys seen the ludicrous? Oh, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny, but. Assume, okay, it could all be true. And then these people are just like, well, let's forget about this guy. But let's say that some of it's not true. What do you say? Like, what is a Kevin Hart? Let's assume that he, he lied says, about Kevin Hart. He lied about Kevin Hart and there were some important details that are being left out. Someone as big as Kevin Hart. Do you say your truth? Do you then go online and make a whole video and or clap back and make a whole thing? Or do you not address it? Because that's a whole tactic in and of itself is what does Drake do with certain people when they start trying to beef with them? He doesn't even respond. And if you just did three hours, talked about you for 16 minutes, 20 minutes straight, is he just going to be good and clap back for another 40 minutes? And then what does this turn into? Mm -hmm. Will people not want to go toe to toe with Cat Williams because they just don't think it's worth their time? Or would they lose? Or was Cat lying? Were they telling I the think truth? you'd have to be dumb to go toe to toe with Cat Williams. I, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think maybe that's why people don't want to interview him too, because he's like not afraid to like tell the truth too, you know? And like no matter who it think, is. What would he be? Why would he lie about all that for three hours? They need to have like a stand up comedy battle or like a back and forth, like on stage pay-per-view sort of thing. And even if there are some misquotes or half-truths, whatever, Cat Williams probably does know many things that maybe Kevin Hart wouldn't like the general public to know. So yes. instead of Kevin Hart could go in there and defend, well, I actually didn't do that. Well, why even get started with Cat Williams when he knows some shit that you don't want. Especially exactly. in like one of his comedy specials where he said, when I first got invited to a LA party, I walked in a room and then I saw two dudes kissing and like they were famous dudes. So he has a lot of, I wouldn't say blackmail, but he's probably seen some things where like you said, let's mm -hmm. say Kevin, he lied about what Kevin said and Kevin wants to put the truth straight. Well, that wouldn't work if he maybe knows 20 other things that nobody knows about you. And the way he speaks with so much conviction, like you said, just makes you think, yeah, what is it even worth your time? Or I don't know, it's interesting. Nobody's trying to really go back to back with him. There's a reason why it has 50 million and views or whatever it's got people people talking. say conspiracy theories all the time but like why is ever like why is it so popular now that cat Williams saying it mm -hmm. and, and then that's what he said when he said all these comedians said that i was doing all these types of drugs when i was when i had a bad time in my life he said how come nobody has had one eyewitness have seen any drug i've done he said the only drug i've ever done is nicotine and weed and he said i literally live with homeless people for three years and i asked them about everything they did and every single story was i had a great life i had a great family a great relationship but i did x drug and now i'm here and i regret it so he said i witnessed that before I was even on and I realized I would never do a drug like that because I lived around it. Mm. So then I was like, it kind of just proved your point of, now nah, he was on coke when he's saying that. And it's like, why has nobody come across saying that they've ever seen him do cocaine or something? Or he's just so good at talking, I don't know. And I felt bad because I then saw the onslaught of hate. That was, them, that was them being sent to Kevin Hart, who, let's assume, all right, he signed a contract, wear a dress, and we'll make you famous, or whatever the hell the intricacies of the contract was. Okay, it's signed. That's what happened. People are ready to hate on something. So I think that this brought it out like when Cat Williams airs it out and then they're like, yeah, fucking Kevin Hart. But it's like, yeah. But I guess was he proving a point like, well, I would never do that just to get further in my career if wearing a dress is something I would never want to do. Just proving a point like, well, yeah. he did it and look what happened to him. I never had to do that. And look how people still call me the GOAT. And he's trying to prove something that's deeper than like just wearing the dress. He called out a lot of actors that did the same thing. Mm. Does that make Kevin Hart a bad person because he decided to do that with his own life? Because I'm thinking, okay, all right, he sold his soul to the devil or whatever. Ain't got shit to do with me. I don't feel mad or like, how could you, yeah. Kevin? Did, did Kevin say something bad about Cat that made him have to call him out? Or did he just put Kevin on blast for no reason? I don't know if, was he only speaking to things that somebody had attacked him at? Because I know there was a guy that claimed that he was supposed to have his role in Friday, Friday, Friday after mm. next, but then he proved like, no, every line of that movie i wrote all the the way the character acted and dressed i came up with you were never a part of that so that guy he was put in his place i don't know if kevin hart but it was weird because kevin hart clapped back as a tweet at the very end was and by the way guys go watch my new blank so he almost used that to 
then continue to promote something instead of actually just throwing any other strays at cat i guess mm. when people watch this they probably didn't think much of it the kevin hart in the dress yeah. let's look at it and see if we can tell if he looks broken just to stand there and act just to i mean you're literally doing a dancing monkey put on a dress and move around like i can get if it was mrs doubtfire like award-winning like act but just to kind of dance around they had drake on there they had jack harlow on there these guys have an image to uphold they're not gonna dress up in a weird but Kevin was still in the stage where he was like in the prime to keep blowing up. Yeah, so he like was he doing. He wasn't at work. Okay, I'll do this now. because then I get this, this, this. Like he was at a thing where he was in all these little movies. He was in. But then so again, it's things. like, yo, who actually really cares? Like, <laughs> That's the other thing. That, okay, he sold his soul. There's so many other people that does, that everyone still watches and can't wait till their next drop. It's not like Kevin Hart sold his soul, therefore he messed up my childhood or something. Like, it's like the new. This is just the new thing to talk about. Like it was Miley Cyrus. Remember, and she was like changed and she's like she's bad drugs this and that everyone forgot about that it's a new person every <laughs> maybe he was just like you said it's deeper he doesn't care about all their successes he's just saying i did my career this way everybody else Tyler perry has to dress up as a woman and his only best acting in things that have profited are him being a woman this guy does better in a dress kevin hart was industry plan steve harvey wasn't broke when he said he was broke in all his motivational videos and he already had money doing this job before he blew up and i'm the only one that my story is real maybe like and that he just trying to prove like no i literally was homeless i literally had nobody i studied all the comics i went on all these tours and i worked my way up so these other people had different success stories and different cards dealt in i just don't like when they say they came from nothing or they came to la with a dream and they did it when they had prior history with extra help and things in place when he maybe literally had none of that now if that was the case let's assume that's the case yeah let's say like um, his, sto his story is real he had to work way harder and is way funnier more successful than everybody else that did was it. fake, like, fake and, and maybe he had some more connections and yeah, maybe they stuck up to the companies because oh, all right, I'll wear a dress, but then they're gonna put me in this big movie and whatever. They did that. Is he just trying to prove a point that I'm just not like anybody else? So if all that's true and he's like, and I'm the one guy who kept it real, wouldn't you say that that's just him just trying to, for his own ego, be like, and look, I'm the one guy that didn't sell out. There's a lot of YouTubers and YouTube content creators that I don't necessarily respect. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's a cop out or like, ah, oh, that's mm -hmm. more, I wouldn't do something like that. I'm not gonna be like calling people out mm -hmm. in this chair. And I didn't have his cards and I didn't do what he did and you guys realize all oh, that stuff's fake and this is written and he didn't even work on any of that. Yeah, I don't know. Because it's like, yeah, why say it? Because he's not promoting anything. Yeah, he's maybe just... it's just there's, there, he didn't want Cloud. He was just trying to set his story straight. But in return, it was so crazy that like, oh shit, he really is everything he said is true. We're going to just assume. I think he's just tired of the industry and this is, he just wants to expose just mm. what he knows and what he's been and like withholding. Said, he said nobody's that powerful in his eyes. So he doesn't even feel like anything can happen to him because he's like, I don't believe in that hoopla. If it would have happened, it would have been happened. It's like, there, it's more reasons to believe him because it's like, yeah, he's not there to promote anything. He's not selling that thing. He's just... and let's say he doesn't get sick or God forbid anything happens to him all year. It's like, well, and then no higher powers that were against him. All at Kevin Hart's PR team and Steve Harvey and the other guy that they're pissed. Nobody fired at him and tried to blackball him or get him gone. He's still there, fine. He also did say that he was coming on here because people were clapping at him. Okay, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Maybe that he only wanted to speak because lies are being put on his name. Yeah, that might have been. I think yeah, that's if what everybody's saying. just saying false stuff about you, and there's a way you can get on the thing, what do you want to clear your name up? But like then, yeah, he clapped back with truth though too. Like I don't think he was scared to even clap back. So then now it's like almost on like, okay, what does Kevin Hart have to say? Because like, mm -hmm. yeah, William said the things, and I almost am believing it. So it's like maybe I need more proof. Or it's like, why is there a connection between black actors that dressed up as females and a lot of them? Mm -hmm. Why is there some sort of connect? Why is that happen? And why is Cap Williams calling? something out like there has to be something mm -hmm. i completely agree and then yeah like no one's really saying like denying it they're just saying like he's just bringing it up and why is he saying this stuff like what was the actor i, I was trying to look his name i just from is it jonathan Ma majors the one that was in creed 3 he was in marvel movies basically he just went through a whole court case where people were accusing him of domestic abuse with his girlfriend mm -hmm. just for him to go on abc news or whichever news outlet where they had that one-on-one -on -one interview and he did nothing and that girl was crazy the whole time and she's not getting charged with anything and he's now lost all ties with Universal, Warner Brothers, and everything. Yeah, for the past three months, I saw people in the comments. I knew he was Grammy. He did look like, of course, he would date a white, white woman and puncher, and he was getting all this hate. Mm -hmm. And then when he did it 17 minutes, and they were asking like, "Well, why would you this, this, this?" He's like, "How come they threw out the evidence of all the scratches she left on my face and my arm that I have photos of, and they only kept the ones of her, her neck?" But I was trying to hold her back from doing more damage to me. And they were like, "And how does it make you feel that even though the court 
words in your favor that nothing's gonna, she's not gonna get prosecuted or anything. He was like, I mean, it hurts. And he just looked like a broken man where, yeah, for the past three, four months, he had to go to court, all these lawyer fees, blah, blah, blah. Everybody thought that he really physically abused this girl from the video clips, what they used without the full story. And then when he gave him his full story to announce it, like obviously he was the one that was true and everybody in the comments was like, holy fuck. What if that's how Cat Williams felt like, oh my God, this narrative of everybody thinking that this, this, this is true about me. I can't stand it anymore. And he clapped. I'm going on, I'm going on Club Shay and we're gonna <laughs> set it straight. Yeah. Um, wow. I don't know. It's annoying because like, well, I'm all over here. Like, obviously, I'm on Cat Williams' side, but like, it's I, something I to seen... talk about, though. It's mm -hmm. like it's top tier drama. So so why did this come out when the Epstein Island list? Came out <laughs> simultaneously. So then, what's that? What's that about? <laughs> and I don't even know. Uh, and why did they say they were gonna drop the list, but then they said, wait. We have to wait a couple more days to release Why the shouldn't list. that be the biggest news right now? Because I think that what people were doing there and what they're hiding there is more significant than somebody, I don't know. Yeah, what if this in and of itself is its own diversion to get everyone <laughs> worried about Carol Williams and Kevin Hart? When really there's something else going on. Because how big of an issue is a industry plant in the, the movie in Hollywood? Like industry? we knew it. Like, Isn't that, <laughs> ever, Hollywood is fake. Like, yeah. So why is this the biggest, I don't know. There's a lot of so nice. directions that this could he go and in. obviously cat williams probably wouldn't have done this knowing it's to cover up something but what if other people were just coming at him like you're gonna keep letting him talk about you like that always? like what if they mm -hmm. worked their way up to get him to publicly speak because they were like somebody needs to make a call and have somebody talk about something we can't keep talking about these ufo fucking aliens in miami we gotta talk about fucking something else and it's like this past whole year 2023 there's podcasts everywhere famous people doing interviews everywhere more famous than cat williams you would say mm -hmm. why did this one get 40 million views. Yeah. On a podcast no one really talked about before this. That's true. And is it all organic? Was there some push? That's what I'm saying. Was there some push on everybody's feet? Like... It's weird how the camera shut off right when we were talking about that. I don't believe anything anymore. There are things that it's like, oh, well, that that's blatantly true. And then I'm like, man. I just heard about this whole alien thing in Florida, Miami, or wherever that was. Yeah, they, they that? shut down a mall and there was like 70 cop cars because they saw three large figures walk by. But then there's all this footage where it's literally just humans walking by, but then people are saying those so humans. So like, what are... is that? And why is that not the biggest thing? I hear. Like, is that real? Like, what is that? And I heard multiple sides of that where it was some job lefters or something, or I don't even know. That's why it's like, what do you even believe anymore? And you hear, oh, alien landings this week, and then we have. But they've already this, teased this it so week. much last year that when they like when they just did this one, and then they proved that it wasn't real in Miami. It almost makes you think when somebody does capture an alien, ah, it's just like the fake. boy who and it's, and it's in 4K. This is the alien, like the uh, guy's AI fake. generated. I was scrolling through TikTok and seeing people's blabber about opinions on things, and I just thought China has done a great job of making TikTok infiltrate the U.S. so that all Americans can start bickering, fighting, destroying the country from within. It's the deadliest weapon, TikTok. And then I even view things like this, where there's drama and then he said, she said, and then oh, this just happened. And uh, it's fun little drama here to talk about and whatever. But I really hope people don't get too emotionally invested in these things and start. That's why I feel bad when they, Kevin Hart's fucking sell out Lula. Cause like, bro, at a certain point, what can you do? Yeah, I like I like you said, I'm not I'm not sweating at night. I'm not going to sleep thinking about damn Kevin Murphy. Oh, like, Kevin. I never really wore that dress. <laughs> Couldn't be me. Like I, I see, I've been a fan of Cat Williams, so it's like yeah. No, I had to rewatch all the stuff after that because I was like, wait, I forgot how funny he was. And He's like, like one of those people where it's like when he says something, like I'm, I want to hear what he has to mm -hmm. say, or like what movie is he in? Okay, I got to see what his scene is. But why did he give his flowers to Patrice O'Neill and Dave Chappelle? People that he had, that are really funny has no problem with. He didn't clown them. Yeah, because those people that are are truly funny and intellectual. They never came after Cat Williams ever. Dave Chappelle and Patrice O'Neill, they never didn't sell their soul or do any sort of mm -hmm. grimy. They opted out of the whole Hollywood weirdo stuff. And didn't Dave Chappelle speak on the whole dress thing before? Like, he did, oh, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah he's, he's something. been talking about that ah. think, too. So All right, if so Chappelle isn't, says, isn't okay, there, I have to look it up. Doesn't there <laughs> something have to be mm -hmm. like, it has to be something like. All right, for a hundred million, are you wearing a dress on SNL? I'm not as smart as these guys, so yeah. Like if that's the only thing you have to do. Yeah, I would. For a hundred mil, I, I would do it just simply to feed my family. Assuming nothing else happens to me. But yeah, you don't know what comes with wearing the dress. I don't think, if it just says the dress. And then... They were talking about some gay stuff that happens in those <laughs> Okay, in those yeah, offices. see. See, we can't be and doing that. Cat Williams that he was seeing kissing at all these Hollywood parties of famous dudes together. And I'm like, well, he wouldn't just make that up. Like, you know, they did something disturbing before Kevin Kevin Hart went out and did that skit. Like he did not look like he was having fun dancing around. Like but they slapping his ass in the green room. This is what you paid for, buddy. He couldn't get mad at any executives because it's like I got to do this first so I can get the next deal. I mean, I'm a conspiracy theorist to a degree. 
Like, when I, I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down. Like, why all these brothers got to wear a dress? That's happened to me. I'm doing a movie with Martin. Yeah. The movie's going good. So I walk in a trailer. I'm like, man, this must be the wrong trailer because there's a dress in here. <laughs> they come in. It's the writer who comes in. I think he's the writer. He's like, Dave, listen. We got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail, so he disguises you as a prostitute. <laughs> they put this dress on, and it's, huh? What? A prostitute? No, nah, I'm not doing that. I don't feel comfortable with that. That should have been in a discussion. What? You don't feel comfortable with it. I mean, it's a hilarious bit. All the greats have done it. So, well, if all the greats have done it, it's kind of hacky, right? You're right. So why don't we just not do it? Because I don't feel comfortable wearing a dress. Oh, come on, Dave. Listen, we, we got it all set up. We're supposed to shoot. Every, every minute you waste costs this much money. You know, the pressure comes in. Huh. He said, I'm, nah, I'm not wearing no dress, man. I'm funnier than a dress. Just give me something funny to say. I don't even wear no dress to be funny. What am I, Milton Berle? Blah, 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 blah. You know, we're going like this. And then finally, he's like, ah. And he, he leaves. And then, like, the director comes, Dave. It really would be great if you wear the dress. Mm. Bro, this is a broke back mountain. You just don't. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They're really pressing. Like, not take a no. And it's like, Ray, if you're getting the what best comedians, that? you don't need to dress them up. Yeah, They're just a com they can be funny without that. And Dave Chappelle's been way funnier, I'm sure, before this movie. It's a good point. Who said, give him a dress? You could think of any other joke. Because right? got the, the best comedian. Because were they looking, well, 10 years down the line, we can always clown them with the dress. Like, is that used as ammo? Because it is. Cat Williams able to use that as ammo on Kevin Hart. At least I never wore a dress in my career. And it's like, fuck, I did agree to that. Is that what it's for? I haven't done extensive research and listened to every black comedian and all this whole dress thing. I hear Cat Williams say it, and I'm like, okay, well, that sounds like it could be true, but I'm not going to take it 100% facts. Then you hear Dave Chappelle talk about it. And then you hear another person, and then you're like, oh, shit. Not like, the thing is, is like they're saying true things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did be going to dress. No one knows the underlying thing, but they're saying what it might be, but no, they're not like denying it. So it's like, what is it? Someone explain the dressing. Someone explain the dressing. Just someone explain it. Clear, I was adamant. I'm not wearing the dress. I'm not wearing the dress. All right, fine. Think of something else. That comes back 10 minutes later. The whole new scene. Hot damn, how did you write the scene so fast? <laughs> You know, it's like, so... Wow, I'll show you, I forgot to watch. <laughs> yeah, he did do four of those. Norbit. Norbit. Eddie Murphy played Eddie that. Murphy. Oh, movie is funny. That is so funny. Damn, I love that movie. Ah, White chicks. They did wear dresses on that fashion walk. Shit. They're all kind of ah. like... And that's the guy calling my kids. Off, I guess you would say. Jamie Foxx! Oh, shit! Oh, shit. Jamie Foxx had to do makeup. Oh! Shit, not Chris Rock. Who was that? Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker. Wrong Chris. Hey, this video has been around for years before the Cat Williams one. Or was it just back then no one thought about it that much and they just say, like, okay, I'll put on a dress. I love how everyone's clapping and laughing and Oprah's like, oh my God, why is he saying this? He's going against the code. Yeah, that's what Ryan said. Like, <laughs> she made that yeah. face of like, I already know about this shit. I love the look on Oprah's face. Oprah knows all about this shit and Chappelle put her on the spot because he knows she's in on this shit. True. And used her show to put the whole industry on blast. Dave Chappelle's the man. Well, because why didn't Oprah say anything back? But His brilliance could not be contained. He did what was right and is getting 60 million from Netflix for three specials. Dave's about the truth. Dave is about the truth, not money. That's why he's so good. I would say the same about Cat Williams. So how can these guys be so brilliant in all everything else, but the moment they say this, it's done. Someone oh. explain the dress thing, bro. Yeah, you know, to be fair, White Chicks was hilarious. No. Yeah. But because that's not an isolated incident, there's also a whole bunch of them. Yeah. So it's like, hey, someone point these out. But does it suck that like those guys, you remember their movies most just because of when they were playing women? It's because the higher ups like, knew that it, it would get better ratings because it's like, oh, this guy's dressing up as a girl. I got to watch that. But it's like, yeah, you, think you sell your soul in a way because you get better ratings, more money out of it. And they probably make so much money on residuals from that being played, restreamed, bought all the time. Do you think they feel some way deep down like that was our biggest hit? Yeah. So mysteriously, the camera keeps shutting down and overheating. Weird. There's definitely weird stuff going on. Obviously, in the Hollywood industry, all that jazz. I don't know exactly what it is. You never know who's in charge of what and who has a say in this and that and who's controlling who. And what to believe at this point to the point where you don't believe in any of it anymore. And yeah, that's where I'm at the point where I'm like, man, I hear one thing and I'm like, 
Well, like I've heard so much shocking things within the past year. It's like nothing even phases me. I'm like, okay, another alien this week. At what point, like, do people stop believing what's being said? Like, and I, it's getting to that point. You know what I, mean? I feel like the internet, everything's getting stranger and weirder fast. Yes. So how weird does it get to where, what? It's almost like you see something and you're just like, you just scroll past it because it's like, okay, is this some more bullshit? Like, I mean, like can be real or not? Like, I don't even care at this point. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, like that's how it's becoming, where it'll be breaking news, this and that. And I'm like, okay. You can get news anywhere on any app now. Mm -hmm. And before news used to be, I don't know, is a term bipartisan where it's equal or whatever. Now it's the news you're getting is skewed to where it doesn't That's tell the whole story. Say, educate yourself. How do you properly educate yourself? Because I could go down a rabbit hole and listen all about this side all day long because like I'm interested in this and I know everything about that side now, but then I say it to you and you're like, you know all that stuff's fake, right? But I just educated <laughs> myself in every single layer about this topic that I was interested in. How do I even- I use the comments to kind of get a general feeling of how people feel, like how the people feel, because I feel like that's always going to lead you to more of the honest like truth of the right path because there's anonymous people that will speak up, I guess, in certain aspects so, so almost no matter whatever i see i go to the comments and i'm like okay what do people have to say like okay do i agree with that or whatever and kind of over it but like if i'm over it and i just want to ignore this oh who cares like you said who cares if kevin arch right who cares about and then it's like well i didn't change the problem what if they're really like why is that like you said what is, what's up with the dress thing then like let's say i just ignore all that like who cares whatever he made his money he did that for the dress but they keep dressing more famous people when dressing. and what's the underlying issue there though someone in charge and they're like it's just a fun puppet game to them where they want to emasculate black men Man just for funsies. And, and is it. that the issue? And is that what's the, trying to get exposed? Or, or is that the haha? It's like, are we still doing it? And what do I care if they just keep doing it? Yeah, exactly. But then I mean, you also could be like, well, who cares then? But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress, at some point in their career, I'd be connecting them down like, wow, all these brothers got to wear a dress. Dave Chappelle reveals why Kevin Hart is a Hollywood mutt. And the channel is called Culture Covered. We just watched that. And you've got the interviews and you got Cat William from 10 years ago talking about this whole dress thing still. And they're saying the more you try to tell the truth about the industry or the people in charge, hatred's coming your way. They'll smear your name. They'll put you down. And the people that agree to the terms and conditions of the people controlling who gets the most power and influence, they will be praise and everything good will come their way but they do have to do a couple dirty things or things that are against i would say their own boundaries and beliefs but if you follow the rules you can get gifted all these wins if you want to be the guy that's like i don't want to agree to that and they push you to the side they keep you shadow banned and we were just speaking about how you look at a cat williams and dave Chappelle, who are two people who are exposing the industry and they're not as big and mainstream in all the movies that kevin hart's in i don't know we could sit and try to name it more actually Actors, black actors that are comedians as well but yeah why didn't dave Chappelle get to be in all these big blockbuster movies he's insanely talented but he didn't get on a roll and he walked away early 2000s from a 50 million dollar deal which i'm sure if he took that deal he probably would have his own art productions but he said he didn't agree to the terms that were in there because he would have to make content that would make him the joke people laughing at him versus him making people laugh and then you think about what's humiliation and then what's the boundary of humiliation like that is kind of humiliating to wear the dress like that so it's like yeah people tend to then well i can move by boundary a little bit but like what's humiliating then what's the next thing that you can do if, if that's not humiliating if that's not a humiliation ritual then what is and then are there more humiliating things behind the scenes the dress was the public thing you're in the group but that production he got and then that other seven movies he had when he was back to back to back where the things behind the scenes oh we'll give you three more movies this year that'll earn you a minimum million each but you need to do this this <laughs> but this you gotta man. fuck harvey weinstein <laughs> and we don't know and if he but it's one of those things well if kevin was he agreed to the dress what other things did he agree to behind the scenes that he didn't want to do but he kept getting more and money. it might not even be options like that where they almost just have to do it because it's already set in place what everything that's in motion or maybe they signed it with oh i see the big number but then where it's like oh you're not gonna do this well okay you're not gonna have this or, or Kevin, you have to do this. What do you mean? No, you signed this five years ago that said you agreed to all of this. And then they zoom out on the fine print. And you're like, oh, I have to do that. I gotta get pegged before my oh. Christmas movie that I'm gonna star in. And the director has to do it just because the director thinks it's cute. It's a 70 year old fucking <laughs> gross man. I was just thinking, Dave Chappelle 
would have been Kevin Hart had he signed the contract. Mm -hmm. Dave Chappelle would have been in 20 different blockbuster yep. movies, fucking Jumanji, fucking yep. this and that, because he didn't sign the contract. Sorry, we'll give it to yep. whoever or other black guy. Oh, Kevin Hart. He had his own standards that he stood on. I found out that the Dave Chappelle thing had been released because I was on Google and then there's some headline, Dave Chappelle, uh, some sort of hate. I don't know if it was USA Today or some BS corporation article website thing. Dave Chappelle didn't learn anything from his last special. Transphobe, ableist, whatever. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, they would never do that to Kevin Hart. Yeah.